Hello there. Today I figured I could answer several questions I've been getting here and there about social score and armory credits. By rolling all that together into one big complete thing here, let's cover all the methods for earning them. I'm sure you're familiar with most or all of them by now, but what should you actually be doing or not doing? I know this is the type of video lots of people would make in the first couple weeks of the game, because that's when people are actually searching for those answers, like how to earn social score, but those first week videos tend to be incomplete and leave out some things, or maybe they become incomplete because of game updates over time. Like a couple of the questions I was alluding to were people wanting to know how much social score is rewarded for the emblem likes and downloads, people wanting to know more about those HQ flat gun events, and also the question I see all the time that is maybe half sincere, half rhetorical, how the hell do you have so many armory credits? Especially when I haven't even opened most of the supply drops I've earned so far. So I can share all my top secret methods that really aren't that top secret at all, but let's answer all those things. I think a good place to start would just be with a big list of all the earning methods I can think of for armory credits and for social score. You can see all of that right there. Can't help but feel like I missed something, but if that's the case, I'm sure everyone will be sure to let me know. Most of these things I don't need to drill down on a whole lot, like the daily orders are not new to anyone for earning drops and the 300 credits and the 25 social score. Usually the social score ones are brain dead easy, like go to the theater, shoot 10 targets in the range, call in 10 streaks in the range, or sometimes it takes actually playing a game or two, like confirm 20 tags. A couple times they had the 500 social score order to get you to check out the COD World League in the theater, that might come back. Anyway, that's very straightforward to do what the game tells you to do. I guess we'll focus on the credits half of things first. Of course, there's that daily login bonus. Gotta keep the streak going to hold on to the three times multiplier. Sometimes you could get the big 500 multiplied to 1500, but I don't know if I've ever gotten that. Payroll, absolutely, every four hours. Very easy to hit that at least twice a day. Up to you how crazy you want to go with it beyond that, setting timers and alarms. Next, of course, you will be getting credits in supply drops from both the duplicate items and you can can get them directly as an item. They introduced that a while ago, the common and rare versions for 10 and 30. Then more recently, I believe they added 90 for legendary and 270 for an epic. All very depressing and insulting amounts, but you can't control that, so whatever. Now we're finally getting to some more interesting things some people wanted to hear about. The HQ flat gun events took forever to show up in the game. I don't even know if they're officially out now or if they're still in a testing phase. It feels like they never really announced it. They just hinted about it and then they started happening for some people. I've done seven of them so far, and I have to say, if this is the final version, the event itself is fine, but the reward for participating is just dumb. It should have been a great way to earn social score. You're working together as a team with people in the HQ to do a thing that has social score written all over it. But no, you get 10 credits per care package that got captured, which is not very much at all. A brief overview of the event if you haven't done one, you can either get on one of the flat guns to shoot down the enemy aircraft, or you can capture the care packages when they're done floating down painfully slowly. More people standing around a care package makes it capture faster. They also have a timer once on the ground, so you can't take too long to get to them, but the rewards right now make this really not worth it at all. The one reason to do the event for now is to complete the challenge for it, and for that I would definitely recommend getting on a flat gun to make quicker progress. You can shoot down a lot more than you can capture on the ground. After that challenge is done though, if they don't make it so that you're earning some social score for doing these things, or multiply the credit reward by 10, I expect to just be ignoring these from then on. Finally though, let's talk about earning armory credits from spectating drops. I have a feeling of all the methods, this is the one that might actually be new for some people, and that feeling was recently reinforced. I actually had this video all written up and ready to record a week ago, I've just been busy, when I saw just a couple days ago, Ace made a video about earning armory credits, so I thought, well, guess I'm scrapping most of this, but I watched it and it was a good video, however the one thing he didn't mention was watching supply drops, which I would consider to be my biggest source of armory credits. I think everybody knows you can earn the 750 soldier XP and 25 social score and maybe even a bonus supply drop very rarely from being near supply drops, but I never see the armory credit reward being talked about, and it is easy to miss if you're not watching, but it is possible to get a 250 armory credit bonus as one of the random rewards, and as you can see in some of these clips, the radius of the loot reward area is quite large too, you don't have to be right next to it. As a rule of thumb, if you can hear the panels of the items getting flipped over, you are close enough 
to get the reward, but you can be a bit further than that. I can demonstrate the range here thanks to the Loot Spectator Daily Order. You can see that was too far away to count, but that time, inching just a bit closer, I was close enough to be eligible for a reward. So it's a large area, and you only have to be there at the time the last item flips over, so if you're actively running around the HQ, you can run over to a drop in the distance and still get a reward for it. It feels like XP is the most common reward, then social score, then armory credits, and then the one supply drop reward is very rare. That is just a feeling I didn't actually study the drop rates, because that seemed like a huge waste of time to get a proper sample size, since you couldn't do anything at all with that information anyway. The odds are just whatever they are. But being next to drops like this really adds up over time. So that is my answer to that question of how the hell do you have so many armory credits. Every time I see that, I think if there's anything I'm doing that other people aren't doing, well one, obviously I haven't spent very much at all, I've only bought a couple cheap items and plenty of contracts, but two, I try to be in the HQ a lot. If I'm at home, I'm sitting in the HQ. My computer where I'm working is right next to the PS4. It's very easy to just set up in a location around the middle area near the spawn, which is where I find the most supply drops get used. Just open up the menu so that there's no AFK kick, doesn't matter where in the menus you are, and that's all you need to do. I don't know where people get their weird AFK methods of running in circles or opening a supply drop and leaving it on the screen and weird stuff. Just be in the menu. And on PS4, I also have the console set to never go to sleep with a game open. I assume there's something similar for Xbox. Now, if you think this is cheating or immoral in some way, I disagree. I think I do a pretty good job at following the rules, both written and unwritten. First of all, looking at the written rules, I did read the World War II security and enforcement policy. How many people actually do that? And it doesn't mention anything like this being a bad thing. Secondly, for the unwritten rules, well, this doesn't feel like an exploit of a mistake in their game. It's just how the game was designed, and it is beneficial for everyone involved. The people opening the drops want to open them near more people to get more social score and I can get rewards for being near the opening. 100% symbiotic, no problem. Whereas something you might argue is similar, like the war mode and gun game AFKing Plague, I find that to be different, because that does feel like something that should be fixed. It is detracting from the gameplay experience for some people. I have never done any in-game AFKing and would not endorse it. Being AFK in the HQ seems harmless to me, but if they don't think it's a good thing, they are free to change it. I'd love it if active methods were better than passive ones. I think that would be a good thing. Like, I don't know, maybe flat gun events with rewards that don't suck. So that's the lowdown on perhaps the best armory credit earning method. Unfortunately, it depends on how popular your HQ is, just depends on where you live and your platform of choice. HQs are very local. I'm sure if you're someone with a fairly populated HQ, you often see the same people again and again. You might even see people with your area code or region and their clan tags, stuff like that. So if you're lucky enough to have an HQ with some people in it, take advantage of it and just sit there. The only reason you might get kicked out is if the game updates or if you lose connection to the HQ lobby, but usually you can just sit in the same lobby for hours and fresh people will keep cycling in and out to open more drops. The drop rate on reward rewards isn't anything amazing, but over the course of a couple hours you'll have an extra couple hundred social score and maybe 750 or a thousand armory credits, and that's really good when you compare it to something like payroll. It would take 40 hours of checking in to get a thousand credits that way. I should also mention, don't leave it on for 24 hours every day all night. Not only does that sound like you're gonna kill your console, but there's really no point in leaving it on at night. Because the HQ is so local, it's going to be very empty at your night time, so no point leaving it on. Well, there's that. Maybe you knew it already, but I know not everyone did. And lastly, of course, you do get some nice big credit bonuses for hitting those social ranks on the list. So why not transition over to those social score methods? Already mentioned the orders, and we all know about commending people. Great to go around and do that. And of course, return the favor if commended. The shootouts and 1v1s are really not all that effective methods, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time detailing those. If you're that serious about grinding social score, you'd have better luck getting on the mic in the HQ and in pregame lobbies, just commending everyone and telling them to commend you back. I've never been that serious about it personally, but maybe you are, I don't know. You do also get social score for prestiging your soldier and divisions. I assume you'll be doing those things for the other reasons, not for the social score bonus, but it's nice to get. Then we come back to watching supply drops. Yeah, very good for social score as well. And of course, when you're sitting in the HQ, naturally some people will commend you as well. I usually have the volume on with people muted so I can see when I get some social score, and I can check the chat area to see if someone commended me or if it came from a supply drop. I'll always commend people back if I notice it. I know I must have missed some commends 
scenes before, but I think I make up for it by going around commending people other times. And to be clear, when I'm sitting in the HQ, I'm sitting there for the drops, not to get commended. I know there's the funny strategy of people using the tacky leaderboard emblem to say, commend me, and just sit there on the rock doing jumping jacks or whatever. I can't help but feel like that's a bit obnoxious since they're probably AFK and not going to commend you back. I honestly think it's both a better and less obnoxious strategy to just sit in the middle-ish area where you're more likely to catch rewards from supply drops. Anyway, that's the watching supply drop stuff relevant to social score. I'm not gonna repeat any of the other things we already covered about the watching drops method. Next is, of course, the inverse. You should be opening your supply drops near other people. It's very straightforward, but also pretty important that you take advantage of it. If you're opening your drops near only a couple people, you're only going to get a couple of social score, whereas you could easily be getting 10 or 12 if you have a pretty busy HQ and you pick a good spot to hit as many people as you can in the radius, which as we covered earlier is pretty large. So even if you're not a fan of hoarding big piles of drops, at least consider saving up a few for a peak time of day, like an after work time or on a weekend. Don't just open them at midnight every night in an empty HQ. I have so far earned a bit over 1200 supply drops in this game. If you're comparing getting 12 social score per drop to only getting two, well then that's an extra 12,000 social score just for opening them at a better time and place. Now, the final social score method we'll discuss is a weird one. I saved it for last because I knew I would end up rambling about it. The emblem sharing system. I'm guessing most people know that you can get social score from it, but just aren't able to get in on it. Unfortunately, it's a very crappy system right now, as I'm sure we'll end up talking about more. So for right now, this information isn't going to be very helpful for many people at all. I waited a while for this to change before covering it, but it's still the same. I'm hoping that in the future, maybe sooner rather than later, more people will be able to take advantage of this feature, and the talented emblem creators out there will earn some social score for their creations, kicking out the crap that's been featured right now and has been featured since the 1.09 update a month ago. In the update video I made back then, I remember I said something like, imagine if the people who uploaded these first 50 emblems were earning social score, they'd be swimming in it right now. And only a few hours after that video went up, in one of the follow-up smaller game update things, the social score kicked in. When I checked back in with the emblem booth, it told me I had social score to claim, and not a trivial amount of it either. I know this will only lead you to hate me for being so fortunate. I had no clue this would happen. I want the system to change too. I'm sorry for being lucky, okay? More on that later. First, I'll just get to the main point here. How do the likes and downloads determine how much social score you earn? Because some people did want to know that. Well, I checked back in periodically back when the feature was new, and also a bit more recently to make sure it didn't change. I recorded every single time I checked in how much score it gave me, as well as how much my two emblems went up in terms of likes and downloads, because the message that comes up says some of your items were liked or downloaded, hinting that maybe they both matter. I went with longish periods of time, like 24 or 48 hours between check-ins, because the emblem likes and downloads don't update in real time, so if I stay in the same HQ going in and out of the emblem booth, the likes and downloads stay the same, but it will pop up with the social score that I've earned, so not very good for measuring. Anyway, after trying to spot some patterns in the data, unfortunately the pieces didn't fall into place perfectly. It isn't as simple as one interaction giving one social score, an interaction being a like or download. It actually seemed like only the likes were mattering and that one like translated into one social score. When I tried to use both numbers, like maybe adding them together and then dividing by three, it was a decent estimate, meaning one interaction has a one in three chance of granting one social score. And for my initial testing, that was always accurate, plus or minus about 3%. But then I did some more testing recently where I got more likes compared compared to the downloads than before, and when I tried to apply the one third thing, it was off by 12%, while if I just go back to looking at likes only, that remained an accurate predictor. So I can't guarantee that's how it's working, but it looks like one like equals one social score, also equal to one prayer. So these people on top of the emblem list should be near max social rank. The butt, for example, having over 250,000 likes, that person should be max rank, thanks only to the butt emblem. Now if you somehow aren't already familiar with how bad the emblem sharing system is, maybe your next question would be, how do I get in on this? I have some cool emblems I want to share with the world. Well, sadly, there really isn't any way to get in on the action because this emblem sharing system is so incredibly bad. I hate to say it, but like a lot of the things in this game, it seems like very little thought went into planning this and testing it, running it by people for opinions, thinking a few steps ahead, like how is this going to play out? I see the posts and stuff from former studio head Condry talking about the hundreds of staff members working around the clock to improve the experience. And I know AAA game design absolutely is a 
very complicated thing. They have a lot to manage, a lot of different teams looking at different parts of it, I'm sure. But this emblem system is so poorly thought through, it might be worse than nothing at all. Because this is insulting in a way. It just makes a bunch of people jealous and resentful towards these first people to upload their mostly mediocre and terrible emblems. How could any of those hundreds of staff members think it would be okay to have the only tab be the top 50 emblems? Like nobody had the foresight to see how that would end up with no trending tab or recent tab or ideally a search function either using the name of the emblem or it'd be even cooler if you could add tags to an emblem but with the way it is the first 50 emblems that got uploaded are forever going to be in the top 50 here because there is no vote decay and there's no way for any other emblem to get more attention than these all you can do now is upload your emblem, and people on your friends list at least can download it and rate it up, but it's far too late to get enough votes to hit the public front page here. So PS4 has this crappy top 50, Xbox has their own crappy top 50, same for PC, and none of them will ever change until something is done by Sledgehammer to improve it. At first, it was just annoying because, well, look at all these crappy emblems being featured when there are so many talented creators out there, but now that the social score incentive is a thing too, all of us bozos who were super quick to the draw are are getting rewarded too. Like the Kylo Ren's pretty good, that was in first for a while before it got replaced by what used to be number two for a while. Just the butt. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. Congrats to this dude who just copied his weed emblem into a bunch of different colors and was early enough to upload them all. And congrats to this dude who uploaded literally nothing. Why was this downloaded and liked 20,000 times each? Yeah, just, really just a bunch of junk, mine included. I downloaded the update as fast as I could, and the first thing I did was sprint over here and upload my three emblems. I had no idea there would be any reward. I had no idea it would be this broken. I just heard about the feature on Twitter and wanted to get my stuff out there right away, although my thonk never got upvoted because some other dude actually uploaded his before I got there. His already had like nine votes when I got to it, so it was in the top 20 at the time. That's how early it was. I don't think it's presumptuous to assume he followed my tutorial because it looks exactly the same. Funny stuff. Anyway, here's my angry Facebook meme. Thought it was funny, but also really dumb. Seven layers or something took like 10 minutes. And then there's spaghetti, which I am pretty proud of. For some reason, a couple weeks before we knew about the update, I spent like five hours making the most perfect copy of the spaghetti I possibly could. All the placement is a near perfect match. I screenshotted the grid to overlay in Photoshop. The colors are the correct RGB values. I thought I was wasting my time with this back then, but apparently it turned out to be a good investment and paid off in the end. So yeah, I am proud of that emblem and it was ranked much higher than the angry. The really weird thing is it's gone now. Two emblems just got removed. Like today, as I'm making this video, they removed the Normie Knuckles thing that was in third place, thank god. But they also removed my precious spaghetti emblem. I still have it, but it is no longer published. I didn't get any notification about it being inappropriate or anything, which it wasn't, goddammit. Sure, it's a dead meme, but it was also a 1939 cartoon, so it's somewhat era appropriate. And they left all the other junk on here, the empty emblem, the weeds, the asses, the self-promotion. So I don't know what happened there, but the angry face isn't going to get me much social score, so I suppose my reign of power is pretty much over. And now we can see the previous number 51 and 52. I'd be fine with the entire top 50 getting removed, but why would they kill off my poor, poor spaghetti? Anyway, I hope all this stuff gets pushed out. There's a lot of good stuff that deserves the top 50. I guess what I'm trying to communicate is, all you talented emblem creators out there, I feel your pain. This is a joke. It doesn't help people share their emblems at all. It only benefited these quick 20 people or so on each platform because you can upload multiple, leading everyone to hate them. So, blessing and a curse being on here, I guess. I thought I was doing a good job grinding out the social score before. I was at rank 18, around 90,000 before this emblem stuff. So, I was well on my way doing the commending and spending tons of time in the HQ watching supply drops. Now, this has given me a huge boost. It has definitely slowed down now, not getting as much anymore. But in total so far, it has given me about 67,000 social score. I've earned the other 100,000 or so with all the other methods. You can hate me for being lucky, I guess, but... I would hope that they'll just keep adding new ways to earn social score. Like, I really thought that's what the flat gun events would be. It's a very hands-on activity in the HQ, working together with people. I thought they were going to be running every half an hour and giving out a few hundred social score each time. But not yet, and maybe not ever. 
Anyway, I think I've covered what I wanted to cover. Armory credits and social score, there are many methods, but the biggest thing that I think many people might not already be doing is just spending more time in the HQ, sitting in the middle to be next to drops. So there should be no more mysteries regarding my hoarding of a quarter million armory credits. And as for the social score, I thought I was doing a good job grinding it out before, but a large chunk of it did come from the lucky timing with the emblems. But whatever, I've apologized enough for something I couldn't control. If you want to hate me for that, go right ahead. I await an update one day that makes emblem sharing actually possible and fun for people to earn social score. Until then, haha, sucks to suck, losers, try being faster next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.